Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a talk through on the Violets Are Violet achievement for the Mass Carnival stage number 31. This achievement is earned by defeating both acts of this stage in under 6 minutes and 50 seconds, while making sure to avoid any dodgeable AoEs, basically not getting a Vuln stack. Now, I did release a fully fledged guide on this, and honestly, that, with a little bit of extra effort to do the damage, is more than enough to get you through that. But I like to explain my thought process, why I do certain things, and honestly, this gives me a chance to look at what I did and see what I could have done better. There's as quick as a 2 minute 47 second kill for this on YouTube, so obviously I could do a lot because mine was just under 5 minutes in this particular clip. But without further ado, let's hop into it. So one of the most annoying things about stage number 31 is that both acts start with a basically you can't burst me at the start mechanic. For act 1 it is going to be mimic and there's really not much you can do. I decided to take all this opening time in order to just prepare myself for the burst that is to come. Looking back, I definitely could have applied a Song of Torment here at the start and at least let the dot tick while I'm waiting on the first Mimic, but instead I go with something very, very basic. I bristle a Tingle here, and I actually just cast Tingle a few times in a row. I'm like, ah, you know what? I want Tingle prepared for as soon as Mimic actually ends, so I got three of those off. I would replace that very first GCD with a Song of Torment, because while I am going to overwrite the Song of Torment, at least I can still be hurting Gogo in this starting section. Not that that overall damage is gonna take me very far. Now the main reason we're using Tingle is because I'm going with a higher DPS output. Some people choose to do this safely with a tanker healer mimicry. I went with a DPS mimicry and brought the majority of the DPS actions. Uh, this definitely helps the kill speeds get faster and it just means that you have to play the fights a little bit more carefully. But my first clear, which is when I actually got the achievement, was done with the healer mimicry. And I played safe while still making sure to get damage out whenever it was possible. So you don't need to go with these uh, higher output builds if you're not 100% comfortable with the healing that comes strictly from White Wind, but that is actually more than enough to get it done. So with this Tingle, we're going to be preparing that for a triple trident as soon as Mimic actually wears off. Now, I have a ton of DPS spells, but I have about eight seconds here to just kind of chill. So in that time, I just need, need to make sure that I have my Bristle back up so that my GCD, my Matra Magic I'm going to use, is going to be considerably stronger. Right as this is about to wear off, I'm also going to make sure to pot. Now, potting is something that I like to call super try hard for the mass carnival. When you're going for a speed kill achievement using grade four intelligence pots, which by the way, grade four intelligence tinctures way overkill for something that's level 70. Uh, either way, it was something that was cheap and affordable and easy enough for me to grab a bunch of them off the market board. So I just decided to actually grab those. Right about one second left, we get that medicated status. And then as soon as the mimic wears off, we cast off guard. Off guard applies nearly instantly. So casting it even just a little too soon is gonna mean that you die. And you, well, you don't want that, I'm pretty sure. So as soon as it wears off, we hit off guard, and now we're just gonna hit our slew of primal spells. Night Bloom, make sure that first GCD is a triple trident as well. All of our primal spells just unleash everything. Now, if you want to, you can actually moon flute a little bit before this, maybe before you actually hit the pot. And while you won't get the full duration out of the moon flute to hit every single spell, at the very least, you're gonna get that huge burst of damage. You just have to be careful because if you moon flute too late, it's actually going to stop you from silencing the boss a little bit later and if that happens then it's pretty much game over so you really don't want that to be the case so after the off guard i go right into my triple trident i apply my night bloom i even instantly do my phantom flurry it ticks for a second and then i finish it off just to do a huge burst you can already see how quickly this boss disintegrates now mind you i am in full i400 not necessarily bis but the highest possible item level that you can be as a blue mage. If you're any lower, then expect all of these to take a decent chunk more time. So we have that applied, and now I'm going through all my primal spells. My eruption didn't go off right away, but that's A-OK. -okay. Gotta love those target macros. And uh, I also go for a devour here for a quick heal. I go for the swift cast into a matra magic while off guard is just about to fall off. You can see I got it just before the minus off guard hit. And other than the eruption not going off because it's using a target macro, uh, otherwise I'd say it turned out okay. I'll get to use that again in a second here. Now there are a bunch of other spells that are pretty good that I didn't get around to using. I didn't bother with magic hammer here because I didn't really need the MP. And I wanted to go with a, a decent number more offensive, like purely offensive spells. Not to mention for some of the mechanics, you really want to have certain spells on your hotbar, like Diamondback, Exuviation, 
and I didn't just I had a hard time making space for it. So I decided to go with the Triple Trident and Tingle, as well as things like Rose of Destruction and Matcha Magic, instead of going for Magic Hammer. Now for uh, Mimic Sap, there's not much you can do here. I already burned my Swift Cast on Matcha Magic, and that's about all you can do. If you want to throw some fish at the boss, feel free. Or if you have something quicker like Sonic Boom, it's pretty easy to do those in between each of these Mimic Sap uh, uh, spells, but I still have Blaze on my bar. Blaze is pretty much the go-to filler spell if you don't need anything for any other particular reason. So you can see, we get out of that. <laughs> I throw a Sardine at him, exactly like I said I would. And then we just hit him with a Rose of Destruction and that Eruption. Now, Mimicked Imp Song is the main thing that you're worried about if you want to do Moon Flute for the very beginning of this fight. And it's why you have to go a little bit soon. Uh, if you go just maybe two or three seconds before I did my pot, or even just like a second or two before I did my pot, uh, you would be okay for this. You would get Mimicked Imp Song silenced kind of close to the end of it. I just decided not to for this because the speed is already less than five minutes anyways. And, you know, that's way more than I actually need. So I get a couple of blazes out here while I have the time. And then I hit him with the Flying Sardine. Funny thing that a lot of people don't know about the newer mobs. So old mobs, when you'd interrupt them, they'd immediately go back to attacking you. When it comes to newer mobs, they might still auto attack you, but the interrupted bar actually kind of hovers over their target bar for quite some time. And it kind of just freezes there. So if you interrupt a really long cast time, you'll actually see that the monsters are in a way kind of frozen for a longer period of time or the same period of time, no matter what regardless of when you silence them in the middle of their cast bar now we don't get to see that here because i silenced it right at the end a few auto attacks and a flamethrower um this was never even remotely close to being a threat even in dps stance doom impending you know i kept my hp up pretty well so this is just one white wind and then right back to dps and gogo -Go. and he's already under 40 percent here so we are way way ahead if you're a little worried about damage don't forget you do have addle that is incredibly useful for reducing any of the magic damage that the boss themselves might be dealing to you with any of their spells especially in the second half of the fight but for now it just doesn't matter blaze let night bloom tick down we have another mimic here which is always a pain but fortunately this mimic is uh, pretty well timed with song of torment we can get a bristle ready for this and then you'll see that literally right as it falls off we can start to do song of torment and reapply that of course we do have off guard here again again perfectly timed just want to make sure we have that you know hit the boss with a few more of our primal spells use devour for the heal get the hp this part i just kind of stayed close to the center and spammed blaze uh you don't have to move too far i just slide cast between each and every one you can actually stand not really still but you can see it kind of it doesn't look great when you see it from that angle but you can actually stand between those two protean waves and as long as you're out of the mimicked fire blast coming from gogo -Go, the main gogo -Go, that not the bunchened one you can actually stand still ish but if the angle is off you can see that that can basically just do a straight line right through the protean waves so staying to the center and just kind of slide casting to the left or the right seemed just to be the play it was just universally a good choice and with that, Gogo is almost gone uh, already for this first act. Now, we don't want to use Final Sting here, so we do want to make sure we actually kill him off. Now, one thing I opted into doing with this setup, because he's so close to dead, I opted to not bring Eerie Soundwave. Eerie Soundwave is something you'll bring if you're doing this boss in a slower manner, because uh, Mimicked Raw Instinct gives him a permanent buff that will force him to automatically crit every single attack. That's, that can be pretty bad if you're not prepared for the increase in damage because everything is going to be doing substantially more to you and you you know any of the damage you take that's unavoidable is going to be that much more impactful. He's so close to dead here though I just forewent bothering with it. It was easier to just bring Tingle and Triple Trident instead of freeing up one of those slots for Eerie Soundwave uh, and to just finish him off here. Now, if you don't bring Eerie Soundwave it's definitely a good option to have if your fight's actually dragging out because at this point Gogo's just going to repeat all of his mechanics again anyway so you've seen everything so nothing else should surprise you from this point on. Me, I'm just going to finish him off with a few primal spells, a couple of blazes, he hits me for like 6,000 there. Hits me with a flame breath here for like 8,000. And you can see he chunks my health. You know, he crits me a couple times with, you know, basic attacks and flamethrower. And it hurts. So take it seriously if you're not actually able to kill him at that speed. You probably don't want to be, like, if you have healer mimicry. Yeah, palm cure is basically a full heal. But do you really, really want to have to use it over and over again because you just didn't bring dispel? Eh. And by the way, you, again, we're way ahead of the kill speeds that are needed in order to get the achievement at this point. You do not need to kill him by then. I, I think I killed him like a rotation and a half in when I got it the first time so we're we're minutes ahead 
of where we need to be. In fact, the instance is only two minutes and 21 seconds old at this point. Now for this, we're gonna go immediately. Uh, we are gonna bristle off guard. I don't have my full opener here. So you can see I kind of didn't know what I was doing. I realized how much of my opener was missing and I just said, bah, whatever, we'll go with that. So whatever I had, I just threw out there. You know, I still have um, Devour, but I just needed to make sure that I actually hit with as many of those spells because I'm not gonna lie, for some reason, I kind of forgot Go Go Fire 3 was here. I don't know why, but you can see that I, just my decision making here is kind of just weird. Um, I forgot Go Go Fire 3 was here, and I don't get far away. I actually have to take a very risky dodge on the Pyretic in order to do all this. But I get the Matra Magic out under the, uh, the, the off guard. I get the Night Bloom. I get a few spells off. I get the instant Phantom Flurry, and then I go, oops, there's a Fire 3 here. And I didn't move far enough away. If I had any higher ping, that wouldn't have worked. There's just no way. Uh, you generally want to move out of the Fire 3 as it's casting, like move away from Go Go, because you can actually get... You can create distance. You can be out of this AoE before it even casts instead of having to do the really risky movement where I have to move like the max amount of distance. And again, if you don't have sprint or if you if you don't have good ping, you are you're probably dead there. You're probably gonna have to start over. So uh, we've already got him under 70%. Go go flare. Uh, this is probably one of the premier places you should use Adol. As you can see, I didn't because I just determined that it wasn't gonna be enough to stop me from using White Wind. So I just said, okay, well, if it's not going to stop me from having to cast White Wind a couple of times here, then I'm not really saving myself any trouble by actually reducing the damage. You can see I did add all the second one, and I guess it helped, but uh, it's, it didn't help too considerably. Now, I, you can see I actually am missing using a few spells here. Devour I haven't used, and the heal from that is actually really nice, and it does deal damage on top of that. I'm not in tank mimicry, so the HP bonus doesn't last very long, but it doesn't even really matter much for that reason. Going into this, I make sure anytime I'm doing triple trident, I'm throwing out a tingle beforehand. It's unbuffed. I should have technically saved it because off guard is, you know, available right now. And I decided I didn't really want to off guard immediately. But Jen, you can see I kind of walk back on the decision. I'm like, oh, you know, I shouldn't off guard till after this is done. But then I'm looking at his dot. And I'm like, but I really don't want to apply Song of Torment till after this. So that's up to you. Um, I think the play here would have been to use the off guard and do whatever I had available because I actually have a lot of time during Mimicked Meteor to use all the spells. Like, look how many spells are coming off cooldown now, in, you know, literally a second from now. And off guard would still be on for another five, six seconds. And I'd be, have been able to apply Song of Torment. I would have got the triple trident under it, all the primal spells you see here. And it still would have been pretty impactful. Um, instead, it largely goes to waste. I think I get Song of Torment and maybe a couple of my other primal spells. You can see I kind of walk up close because I'm afraid of using them even. So uh, I don't even use them because I'm waiting on that diamond back. There's another blaze. And as soon as I see this, I swift cast the diamond back. Now, a big thing that I'm afraid is confirmation bias, and I mentioned this in my guide. Every time I've done this, the tornadoes that are coming out right after this are in the intercardinals. So you can see me, I'm I'm to the east side of the arena. Uh, still kind of close to the center, but I made sure to stay out of the intercardinals. If those can be on intercard or those can be on cardinals, and I've just gotten so much confirmation bias, I'm genuinely worried because I've had that kind of luck when making guides and things in the past. So uh, just a little warning that being closer to the center or diamond backing much faster will ensure that you don't have to deal with the Charybdis AoEs or that they won't completely screw a good run. Um, but you do need to make sure you diamond back this, and I always save Swift Cast to diamond back this because I'm always worried that uh, I'm not going to finish the cast. And you can see, kind of warranted. You know, I Swift Casted that, and I still barely got it done in time before Go Go Meteor. Then we have the Charybdis AoEs. These things are terrible. These things just blind you. I don't know why they decided these AoEs had to actually be visual obstructions. My only advice is try to keep the camera facing the Cardinals. Like, what else can you do? I mean, you try to tilt the camera up, they get in your way. You tilt the camera down, you get in your way. They're annoying. So that's the only advice I have, and even that's damn near impossible when you're actually doing the majority of the mechanics. Fortunately, as you can see, the boss is already in an unhealthy spot, so we're, we are in a good spot. So uh, I make sure I do a re reapplication of Song of Torment here. Now this is one way, I don't know why I did this the way I did it. So I Exuviation, the Frostbite, and I think I, I, I'm thinking back to the way I was thinking. I think I was thinking uh, that that was gonna get rid of the slow and it got rid of the dot, which I think it almost always gets rid of the dot first. And so I actually had to Exuviation a second time, which I had forgotten I was gonna have to do. So you see me doing a bunch of other spells in between, but as long as you get that done before, 
that uh, Go Go Thunder 3 comes out, then you should be fine. Um, I wouldn't recommend bringing Loom for this. You just have to make sure to stay away from the Intercardinals. Don't touch any of the Tornadoes. Don't get too close up. I actually have to get really close to this one on the right. Not right now, but you can kind of see, if you go back and you look at how much overall safe spot I actually have, you can see kind of for a brief second right there. How much, like if I were to try and cross through that area for the next AoE and I got pulsed on at the same time, uh, there's a decent chance I'm going into that uh, Maelstrom over on the side from the Charybdis. So I uh, this this was a little bit slow of a movement that made these Thunders a little bit more awkwardly placed. I like to place them kind of in each of these little uh, corridors in each of these Cardinals between the Maelstroms. But, uh, you know, that is what it is. I'm just glad I didn't accidentally step in the Thunder AoE right there. Place one more here, and I have about that same amount of open space. Like, I think I had even less space there to actually do the movement that I just did. But fortunately, we're already coming up close to the end of the fight. And this is really a big bit because of the DPS mimicry. Like, I'm in kill range at this point. Um, I've had some final things do such a huge variety of numbers that I'm always scared to really say exactly what percentage you should do it. In this one, I do about 180,000, and it's not a fully, fully buffed one. It's not potted. It's moon fluted. It's whistled. And I think it's off guard, and, and I think that's it. So it doesn't have a pot. And I think it's missing one other thing. But it's, uh, it's still more than enough because I kind of underestimate how much damage I deal. So I do the Fire 3, I do the Blizzard 3, and I'm like, okay, now's, now's the time. I bristle, I off guard, and I'm like, okay, what am I doing? I Moon Flute, and I go, you know what, let me cast a couple more Primal Spells because they just came off cooldown. Go, go, goes from 22%. Look, he takes these two hits. He takes an Eruption, and the Night Bloom initial damage goes down 5%. Then I'm like, oh, I have Matra Magic, let me do that. Bam down to 8%. Like, why did I even do that? I could have just finished him with the final sting that does 180,000 damage. So, what do I do? I whistle. The off guard's about to wear off. I final sting before it does. And we do 181,896 damage. That's just under 18% because his HP is just over a million. So, he was at 17% when I cast that. I could have killed him with it pretty much instantly after the first two spells. Not to mention the dot tech probably would have brought him down a little bit lower. Now, that is not direct hit or crit. That is not pot. That is not a big number. You can do way, way more than that. I could have probably done over 300,000 damage with the same final sting. But it is really that simple. If you can do one rotation of each of Gogo's mechanics, and you can kill him before you have to do a second one. I mean, you you beat this. I think, this, again, this is 4 minutes and 49 seconds. I beat it at 25.11 into the instance, yeah. So 4 minutes and 49 seconds. The big thing to remember is that that clear time is from the second you enter the carnival. So you don't want to hang around the beginning or hang around between the rounds. You really want to get going pretty much immediately, as long as you're sure that you're not going to be hit by any of the attacks. As long as you get that pure Azure bonus, that's how you know for certain that you've gotten the Violets are Violet achievement. And with that, it's pretty simple. Even if you want to do the other mimicries, those are all the mechanics on both acts. They just repeat from that point on. So that's a little talk through on approaching that. Big thing is having all those primal spells. If you don't have a lot of old spells, I highly recommend going and grabbing basic instinct. And if you want to go back and just like undersize some of the old spells to try and get them with lower learn rates, that'll work. But even with, with basic instinct, some of them you can actually do at the same level. But with Basic Instinct, you shouldn't have too much issue going back and learning a bunch of the Primal Spells you saw here, both the level 50 and 60 ones, and then even some of the 70 ones you can technically solo, but there's, it's also not too bad to try and just throw a party together for things like Night Bloom or things like, uh, I guess, Ethereal Mimicry from Dungeons. There's, there's all sorts of things. As long as you have those things, you shouldn't be having too much of a hard time with anything's, anything Go-Go's stage number 31. With that, that'll be a wrap for my talk through on the Mass Carnival stage number 31. Thank you for this extra, for joining me for this extra little bonus video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned. Anything Endwalkers, anything guide-wise, news-wise, I'll make sure to post it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.